think I figured it out. Okay, let's go. Hey guys, it's Matt from Ventimore and Marksmanship. Today we're going to be doing some rifle drills. We're going to start using the Sheriff of Baghdad rifle, uh, that is carbine placement test as a warm up. For that we need a target with a three inch circle. Okay. And uh, we're going to use that as our warm up and sort of a baseline indicator of where we're at. And then we're going to come back to it at the end of our range session. And we're going to shoot it again and we're going to compare our scores um, yesterday i came out here off camera and did some pistol work and uh, i did the same thing using the sheriff of baghdad pistol uh, placement test i used the, the pistol placement test as somewhat of a, uh, a warm-up and then i used it again at the end of my session as an indicator and uh yeah it was really cool seeing the the big difference in uh in results following my training and uh yeah it was it was good to see and gave a little bit of a confidence boost to uh to show myself that my training that i was doing was actually resulting in um quantifiable results and so we're gonna see if we can do that again today we're gonna focus on rifle and today i want to work on standing and kneeling so uh yeah let's go ahead and do the thing okay guys this is the carbine placement test this is the carbine placement test and the course of fire is as follows from the three, then the five, the seven, and then the ten yard line, you engage in a under a par time of two and a half seconds, three rounds from the low ready. And uh, yeah, so total of, of 12 rounds on target against a three inch circle. And uh, yeah, so this is a close range drill. You need to account for height over bore, right? Uh, the unity riser on this guy gives me a height over bore of about three and a half inches or four inches you know that's like four inches at least um, yeah so we're gonna go ahead and dry fire this a couple of times and then we'll do it live from the three yard line yeah and so that's plenty of time, right? We should have no problem with this whatsoever. But uh, let's find out. Let's do a dry fire again. Probably send the bolt home to the, do the dry fire rep. But Okay. So I've drawn my circle over the middle of the A in the A zone on this target. Right, so we have the A zone, okay, and we have our three inch circle. The A here obviously transects the middle of the A zone halfway up, and uh, the circle is meant to be right in the middle of that as well. So if I place my dot right here, okay, I should be good to go. Let me just measure. This is my appropriate height over bore. Okay, so I need to be aiming right here at the neck of my target to be hitting in the middle oh man that's a lot of height over bore but uh nothing we can't handle right let's go ahead and do it okay so three yards is right here camera's pointed at me and we're gonna load and make ready
three point check, three point check, safety on. Okay. Three rounds, two and a half seconds from the low ready, stand by. All right. Good to go on that one. Uh, may have overestimated the height over bore a little bit. Yeah, we're gonna drop it down, my point of aim. We're in there, but we're in the upper half of the circle. Okay, so that was from three yards, now we back off to five. I'm just gonna tilt the camera this way. I don't have to move it. Okay, one, two. By the way, that was in 1.62 seconds. Okay, here we have from five yards on the low ready, three rounds. That was much better, right in the middle of the A zone. Shading slightly to the right, two steps back, seven yards, one, two, that was in 1.6, we're having a, we're getting a really consistent tempo here, which we like, all right, from seven yards, three rounds, low ready, stand by, okay, that was a little slower, 1.95, we're still well within our target, and our group is outstanding. We stack those last two groups together. I'm gonna bring the camera back so you can see me. All right, here we are at the 10 yard line. Okay. Three rounds from the low ready, stand by. Okay, 1.88. And uh, yeah, we cleaned that one. We are good to go on this. Um, yeah, our first group is right over here. I think these three, three shots are my first group and that one happened somewhere else, but really good consistency here. Sli shaded slightly to the right. Um, I think that's mainly to do with if I put the camera out in front of me, you'll be able to see what I'm talking about. So uh, a lot of shooters have this issue, especially when they're uh, shooting. I should say this is a thing that you do when you square your body to the target. So let me just show you. Um, so straight up and down with the rifle looks like this, right? Okay, now I have to tilt my head off to the right to get behind the dot when I want to keep the gun straight right here, right? But if I stand up straight, okay, like I'm, you know, like I want to naturally, okay, and then I bring the gun to my eye, you see what happens? You can see my dot is here, but the gun is cantilevered off to the right, or I should say my optic is twisted to the left, okay, which places my, uh, my bore to the right, okay? Um, okay, and so up close, right, that's gonna give you a slight right-handed dispersion in your shots, okay? And, uh, wow, I don't know what the hell that was. A couple weeks ago, we did, or more than a couple, a few weeks ago, we did a video where I was doing CQB stuff in, uh, in a riverbed, right? The CQB riverbed video. And I demonstrated height over bore and I walked up to the target, right? and I plugged a hole in it. Now I was walking up to the target and I had my muzzle on the target, just touching it, but my dot was here. Okay, and you can see I had the same problem, rotated to the left. So, so really, talking to professionals about this, they're not really gonna tell you that it's much of a problem, okay? And I would agree. However, I know for a fact that this right-handed uh, dispersion okay that is groups favoring to the right not because of uh not because well really just because of this issue of technique okay that affects your shot group at extended distances okay uh 
Now, most people are going to be shooting braced the farther back they go, and that inclines an individual to blade, right, which then levels the gun. Now, this is really a thing about the shoulder pocket wanting to be behind your ear, okay, when you're bladed, okay? But if I square off, you can see my shoulder pocket wants to push up and therefore rotate the gun, okay? And so, so that's what's happening. And that's why the groups tend to favor a little bit right for right-handed shooters with the rifle as opposed to left with left-handed shooters. And uh, this is just a thing about modern technique. Everybody teaches push the gun to the eye, push the dot to the eye, and pull the trigger, right? And that gets you very fast and it very accurate, but you need to understand that you're going to have that dispersion up close and it's going to get worse as you back off if you're shooting in the standing with that technique. So, uh, so yeah, take that for what you will and, you know, adjust as you feel inclined. Um, but I got to tell you, the dispersion is an inch. Now, if you miss by an inch and you miss, that's a miss, right? So just, I guess, put it, put it, put it here <laughs> and you'll be fine. Uh, okay, so let's work on standing, kneeling. And we're going to do it at different distances. We're going to work steel for the uh, the practice reps and not the warm up because I don't want to. I want my I want to save paper. Okay. Okay. So now we're going to do. Speak up. Now we're going to do repetitions of standing and kneeling and transitioning between the two positions quickly and so yeah let's do it i don't have a set time for this um yeah so let's just see how see how i do okay point eight Let's see it kneeling, sitting and kneeling. One point nine six. Okay. Let's try that again, but let's get more stabilized because there is a lot of bouncing at the end of that. Point three four. That was longer, but it was more stable. I bothered to put my whew, tricep down on my knee. Um, I don't know what you think. But just remember, it's it's not bone to bone. Right. You got, you got a good position with it. You know, <clears throat> knee to knee. Uh, your right foot, your your right right foot is out to the side quite a bit. Yeah. Uh, you want to sort of get more stable by almost sitting on your heel. Let's we'll slowly get into the position. Not like you're dropping into it, just... How far down can you get towards your heel? I'm putting the weight of my... No, that, that's fine, don't worry about it, I'm just... You know. That's fine. I don't even think I'm on camera. Let's do it here. Let me see. So like my standing stance should be essentially just like a normal step. Okay, and then planting the heel on the back foot. Okay, and then kneeling should be a step forward. Drop the knee into it. It doesn't have to be quite so far out. I mean, it, it, that's good, and that makes for nice, stable. Yeah. But you know, you're uh, go ahead and bring it back in like a normal stance. Okay, right there. I just go ahead and drop to your knee, and put your arm out on the knee. You can't really get that low. No. Thing. Okay. 
so don't worry about it. So I think the wider base makes it more stable. And yeah, it does. It does. Yeah. But you got to understand that uh, most of the time, the majority of time that you're going to be firing from the knee is after somebody has told you to take a knee. Right. So take a knee, you're scanning the scepter, suddenly you got contact. You know? um, you will well, it's also for utilizing cover. Yeah, or, right. or terrain, or you know, brush, or next to a tree, uh, or a wall, or whatever. But you're more often than not taking a knee and looking before you even start firing. But then, that's not always the case. Sometimes you hear you hear the pop, you hear the thump, you know, crack thump kind of a thing. Somebody's shooting at you, so you take your knee and look for targets. If you can shoot from the prone, you shoot from the prone. But uh, if you're going to scan, shoot, and move, uh, a knee, and that's what you do when you when you halt the patrol anyway, is you take a knee. Sometimes you take a step out and drop in the prone to take to cover your scepter. But more often than not, you'll be taking a knee. So that's, that's kind of the habit we've gotten into, uh, at least my generation did, is take a knee, halt, take a knee, going to stop, then you, you get in the prone if you can. Especially if you've got some kind of cover you can shoot around the base of. Because you know? when you shoot around, say, a tree or a rock or something like that, you get down to the bottom, brace against it. You don't stand up and brace against it unless uh, there's a reason to. Okay. You know? That's fine, but you're not steadying on the knee. No, I'm not. But that's a different, that's a different shot, different position. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You're right. Now let's let's I emphasize mean, placing whatever, the elbow down. Whatever the situation calls for. Though. Yeah. <sighs> That'll reach out. Yeah. reach out a long ways. You feel how steady it was? Yeah, I did. Okay. You know who's real good at that position? Is John Crossman. Remember the old... Uh, yeah, yeah. Goofy? You know, he actually had the record. Uh, I think it was a 30 cal he was shooting for, for needling. He got, he got the best. Had the record for a long time. But go ahead and test it. Look, get in that position and just look and then get back, drop down onto the knee, and look, and okay, see so what you see. From what here, unpositioned, on or unbraced, it's basically just standing, but lower, right? Well, look at it and see what kind of movement it's doing. And then steady on the knee. See, that's very often if the target is far away. If it's like 100 yards, you know, that's that's the position you want that's possible, depending on what you're more comfortable with. Could you make it more steady with that, in that position, you can the other, unsupported? Which target were you shooting? The left one. Here, I'll, I'll put it on the blank steel. There you go. Okay. Put right. three on it and then put three on it. Alternating position. Between unsupported and supported? Yeah. Okay. I just want to look at the shot group. Shoot the top half for, uh, unsupported and the bottom half supported. Okay. So, normal stance like this. Drop into it. First shot was way high, so yeah. that's why I did four. That's right. Your second okay. shot's right next to it. So. Okay, now look at those two shots. Yeah. See the difference? Yeah, I do.
That matters when you're shooting a few extra yards. Yeah. So I'm going to walk down to the target. Yeah, let's look at it. Supported. Even though it's a little more uncomfortable. So this is my first group here. Let's get out of the shadow. First group is here. Okay, we have one, two, and three. It's very wobbly, especially in the vertical plane. I have less of an issue with windage, but it's definitely a recoil control issue. But here I'm much, I'm obviously much more stable. Now my first shot was low and right, and I was trying to put it here, but then I shot low and right, and so I decided, okay, I'm just going to use this as my new point of aim and try and stack them. And then I have a two very consistent uh, group below it. So. I know kneeling is uncomfortable. Yeah. It's my least comfortable position. Yeah. It always has been. But it's, it's better than you should be able to shoot kneeling more accurately than standing walking. Yeah. If I tighten it up. You can actually extend the foot out a long ways too. Some people do that. Yeah, but I, I lose a lot of posture that way. That's pretty tight. To the left, though. Well, it's good. 31. You got into it quick. And you look pretty steady. Yeah. Uh, okay. Again, to the left. That's a flinch. That's a flinch thing. 286. That was even slower. So, okay. Don't flinch. Push the gun into the shoulder, push with the shoulder, right? Oh yeah, right on the money that time. Okay. 275. Nice. 212, okay. Okay. So I think the problem that I was having before, and it was most obvious when I was doing standing kneeling prone, the, uh, the couple of times that I've done it before, most recently was a couple months ago, or no, I guess it was about a month ago now. Uh, just just at Easter, I think. The thing that I was doing wrong was coming down onto the knee with my elbow and then just kind of relaxing onto it, right? And then trying to like ambush the dot. So what I'm doing now instead of that is bracing into the knee. And so what I mean by that is, in the same way, let's say you have a bipod or you have your magazine placed on the ground when you're in prone, you push the weight of your body, your upper body with your shoulder into the gun and that braces it, providing a solid point of contact with the ground, with your, your shoulder pushing into it and then, or your shoulder pushing into the rifle 
and then your rifle pushing into the bipod or the magazine onto the ground and that provides a very stable platform right i think i think and this is what i'm seeing right now the same concept should be applied when doing kneeling because when i am stable i am pushing myself my weight into the gun the gun is pushing its weight into my elbow and then my elbow into the knee and then into the ground okay and so it's like a constant line of force going from my shoulder all the way down to my foot on the ground as opposed to a limp noodle up here and then just kind of hoping it comes on target. And uh, I think that habit actually goes back to the way I was first taught to shoot was when doing um, small bore shooting where you're wearing a very rigid um, nylon and leather suit and then a very rigid leather sling and then you have a very heavy rifle that's shooting a very small projectile. And so you just concentrate on your breathing and you allow your natural point of aim to settle onto target and press the trigger when it's settled onto target. However, this is, is much more reliant upon the, the muscle and the skeleton of the shooter as opposed to relying upon the skeleton and the, the exoskeleton, if you will, of the shooting suit in a Olympic small bore three position type of competition. So that's kind of the transition over. It's more of a uh, Yeah, it's just a different technique. So so once again We're gonna drop down onto the knee very quickly. We're going to press the shoulder into the gun and the gun support hand is going to press into the knee the elbow into the knee and then that will drive the force of the weapon stabilized onto the front foot Okay, let's do it. I think I figured it out. All right, we're good to go. <sighs> I've never been more stable in the kneeling, you know? I just, all right, I got carried away, whatever. Um, yeah, we had a failure to feed, but then I fixed it by just slapping the mag and then didn't realize that I had fixed it and I ejected a live round. So I'm gonna find that and then we're gonna do something else. Okay, so we did the placement test as a warm up, and then we did some, some technique driven repetitions focusing on a particular part of our, our, uh, our technique that is kneeling. So we're now going to close out the range session by revisiting the placement test and just to, you know, close out, make sure that we're improving or at least not getting worse. So this is where, this is how we shot the first time, accounting for height over bore. My point of aim should be about here for an impact about here in the middle of the A zone. So let's go ahead and do it. So three, five, seven, and 10. My rifle is really hot because I just did a mag dump because I'm, uh, I'm imprudent. Right. Three yards, one, two, three. Okay. So it's a par time of two and a half seconds per uh, group. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, okay, and what does that sound like? Up, one, two, three, okay, and that's the drill. So, all right, let's do it. So this is from three yard, three rounds from the low ready on a three inch circle at two and a half part time, two and a half second part time, right? Very nice. Right smack in the middle of the group, or the circle. So that was three yards, let's back off to five. One, two, and that was in 148. Okay. Five yards, three around, three inch circle, stand by. Okay, no problem, good to go. 1.63, uh, now seven yards, one, two, Seven yards, 
three rounds, two and a half seconds. From the low, ready, stand by. Oof. That was close. I almost missed 1.75. Yep, okay. I had one work off to the right, uh, but we're just gonna tighten it up in the shoulder, good to go. One, two, three, we're at 10 yards now. And, uh, all right, two and a half seconds, here we go. Whew, almost missed that one, two, four, eight. And a little loosey-goosey on that last one, but we're in, so we're okay. So, All right, so that was my, one of my last shots was here, and then again on the group before that, I had a couple work to the right. So, uh, yeah, here's the thing, don't get lazy. Don't get lazy when you're uh, when you're working up close, okay? Because you know it, it always matters how you control recoil, okay? Your follow-up shots always need to be precise, and you don't get away with loose technique up close. You just don't. In fact, in some ways, you notice it more, okay? Because uh, the difference between right in the middle of the A zone and the uh, the right-hand edge. It's pretty obvious when you do it on paper. Okay, so I'm Matt. This has been Momentum Mori Marksmanship, and we worked on rifle, kneeling, and close range warm up and cool down drills. Thanks very much. Remember, you are dust, and to dust you shall return. So take cover and shoot straight. Have a good one. Okay.